Awesome. All righty. Good evening, everyone. Happy Thursday. It is Thursday. Is it Wednesday? Maybe it is Wednesday. I can't Today even remember. Today is Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. 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 See, we're yeah. early. This whole snow. We fast forwarded. Well, I'm, I'm in like a snow haze. Uh, you know, I can't keep track of what day is going to snow and what day it's going to be 60 degrees here in Virginia. We just keep going back and forth. You just got to roll with it. It's all good. <laughs> Exactly. Roll with it. So we have an amazing guest this evening. Her name is Barbara Bickman, and I'm going to let her tell you all about her, but I'm super excited to interview her. She's like, I follow you. And so it's like just so great to even just say hello to you face to face. So go right ahead and introduce yourself. So I'm Barbara Bickham. I do kind of three things now before I did two. <laughs> so I have Trail Adventures, which is my blockchain advisory, AI advisory, kind of advanced tech advisory company. So we help companies kind of grow, scale, and innovate technically using the blockchain, AI, and other kind of advanced technologies. So that's Trail Adventures. I also do the, I'm the chief of the block at the Blockchain Accelerator for Global Growth. And we help blockchain companies grow and scale internationally. We help them with their clientele internationally. And then we also run this due diligence intensive, which is kind of a, it's a 31 page uh, uh, set of documents that help companies kind of uh, determine if they're fundable or not from blockchain side and from a traditional side. So we look at it from all the different vectors. Um, and we're in the process of, of raising a fund for women um, so your company has to be either female founded or have half female on your board or kind of half female in your executive C-suite. So that's coming in process. You have a lot going on there. <laughs> I, have lot, I have a lot going on. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to get delve into that's that. Awesome. The rest of the you know, rest of life going on. Exactly. And you have a full on. life. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your uh, background and how you got started in the uh, blockchain space. So I know a lot of the blockchain pioneers. So in 2012, like a few of my friends that I knew came to me and said, hey, Barb, you should try and buy this Bitcoin thing. I'm like, Bitcoin, that's not even a real thing, is it? Like, it, it was like so fake to me. And so I was like, no, nah, no, nah, that's okay. So I missed that, that one. And then uh, 2015, um, I actually heard a talk from someone, uh, Michael Winklevoss from Gem. He's the CEO of Gem, and he talked about the evolution of money and how money worked. And he talked about Bitcoin. And I got to hear Andreas Antonopoulos on Skype. Anyway, he couldn't fly out, but uh, it was cool. And I said, "Wow, hmm, missed that one." So I kind of went off in the AI direction. <laughs> and then 2017, kind of like everyone else, um, I had a client that's uh, they're in the uh, Columbia, and then their name is Two Transfer, and they do a remittance across on the blockchain. And so that was kind of the first four way into it. And then last year, um, I actually ran a company um, that was a, a bot, trading bot for these different exchanges. And so I was the CEO of that company. I raised them a good clip of money, then came out of there. Then everyone knew, like, Barb is a chief technology officer. I had figured out all the different. Uh, kind of ways to raise money. And then I already knew how to do economics because um, at Berkeley, I took a class from a Nobel Prize winning economist. So I did that for you know several of my class, underclass. So that's how I got into the blockchain. Wow. Kind of like everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's always it's interesting that even as a technical person, mm -hmm. you had reservations or even just didn't really believe when first broached about it. So I think that's what is true. that apprehension and why do you think it takes I always say like two or three times to, to get people kind of introduced or even curious about cryptocurrency or even just having the conversation about blockchain. I think the thing that uh, most people, because it's like foreign and you really have to try and understand like, what is it and how does it work? And, you know, technically there's a lot of things you have to do to even empower a transaction a little bit less now. It was more, Previously, like in 2012, 2015, like there was a lot of things you had to do and you really had to be a serious technical person in order to even do a blockchain or, you know, buy a cryptocurrency. You know, now they have Coinbase and a few kind of starter ways to do it where people are a little less um, apprehensive about how it is. But it's just was like a lack of understanding pretty much until I got into it. Then it's like, oh, OK, now this isn't so scary. 
<laughs> not so bad. <laughs> not so scary. Okay. <laughs> well, you do have an extensive, uh, you know, expertise in so many areas. So you talked mm -hmm. about a little bit about blockchain, but you also mm -hmm. have experience in IoT yep. and augmented reality and even AI. So can you give mm -hmm. us a little bit of background about how those things that you got into them and how you garner knowledge in those so, areas? AI, I took in Berkeley at Berkeley. So I have a computer science degree from Berkeley. So when I was at school, you know, AI has been around forever, um, you know, as far as computers is concerned and computing. So I took kind of some classes in school. Then I got reintroduced to it in 2015. And I said, well, I know how to do this AI thing because I had done it before. And I just kind of started writing a lot of AI. So I've written six AIs. Mm -hmm. um, across multiple platforms. So I've written for TensorFlow, Watson, um, Facebook, Alexa, <laughs> what else? I did a decision engine by scratch. So I've written all these things by hand. So I really, really am clear on like, how does AI work? How's the data flow? What are the vectors? What are the data points? How do you go about making sure that you're getting the information out of the AI? How do you train the AI? Do, are you going to do NLP? Do you need a Corbis? Do you need, so like, I'm very well versed on all the kind of aspects of data around AI. Mm -hmm. Internet of Things, um, I came out of the wireless space. So I'm actually one of the wireless pioneers in the United States. So when you text help to one, two, three, four, five, that's partially my fault. <laughs> so I was in some of the rooms where we were making all the kind of standardization and kind of stuff uh, across all the different wireless. So I did that. QR codes, not so much. A lot of content on the phone. I put some of the first apps on App Store before it was Apple, App Store and iTunes and all that. So I did a lot in the space. So I was very versed on Internet of Things. And when I went to this company, um, I ended up writing their award-winning REST API for their IoT platform. So, um, you know, that's how I got kind of back into it. Uh, mm -hmm. IoT is not dead. It's just uh, evolving into a different way, into a different way than that's kind of separate from what I'm concentrating on now, blockchain and AI. But they will all converge at some point, in my opinion. And then AR and VR, I did some work at the Hyperloop. Um, I was kind of in charge of their AR VR experiences. Mm -hmm. So that's how I kind of got into that. And I have a lot of people that are in the content space because that's what I did from wireless. I would put content onto phones and vice versa. Um, so a lot of my content friends were like, well, how do I monetize my AR VR content? So we talked a lot about, you know, different models, revenue business models around that. So that's kind of how, how do you that. merge your tech side and your financial piece because you do since you are a, a, a CTO, you have to balance those in your daily, you know, in your daily running of your businesses. <laughs> so yeah, in my CTO you do duties. Um, well, I mean, they're two, you know, I'm very strategic now. So you, you don't really, I don't really code anymore. Okay. So that tactical piece of me, I've retired from, which is good. Uh, so because it takes, it requires a different energy. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's interesting when I find a lot of CTOs that code, you know, they're very young and it's like, okay, you're just starting, but really it's a very tactical ability mm -hmm. and the ability for you to be very tactical and then switch back to the bigger 30,000 foot level context. You know, it's a very big context switch and it's different creativity and mm -hmm. everybody doesn't have the capability to have the tactical and the, the kind of other operational fundraising monetary uh, switch. I mean, everybody just doesn't have that. So there's a lot of, of switching there. And so I decided, well, I'll stay at the higher level and we can just have like other people do all that coding thing. Gotcha. So that's, that's kind of how I, I did the transition and that's how I balance it because okay. like that's a better aspect of my brain. I still architect and design things, which I've done from the very beginning. My first job, they had me architect and design something. Mm -hmm. So I still do that. I'm still very good at that. But then if they want it built, I kind of hand it off to that over other to. folks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good delegation skills. So. You got to be able to delegate. <laughs> <laughs> delegation is a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. A lot of our members in BBC are non-technical. So what would okay. your recommendations be for individuals who are not so technical in the sense of coding or even, you know, the outlining of, of things and architecture? What do you think is their um, vantage point in the space now to what would you say is something that they can contribute to the blockchain or um, IoT space right now? So any of these technical spaces, so I just literally had this conversation last night. I did a talk at uh, CSUN, Cal State, well, Cal State LA, actually, and um, talked to some students. And 
one of the slides was, where do you fit in the blockchain space? So we need marketers. We need UI UX designers. We clearly need UI UX designers. Yes. <laughs> we need lawyers. We need economists. That wasn't on the slide. We need CFOs. That massively was not on the slide. Accounting. I mean, we, you, you need everything that you need for a normal company, for a blockchain company, for an AI company, for anything that's, you know, so non-technical founders are more than welcome. And, you know, just because you're not technical doesn't mean that you can't find a technical person to align with what you want to do. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's really the, the, the key to it. It's like, how do you go about building your team? If you can start selling the tech people and the, uh, these other people, then, you know, you can then go sell an investor. It's like, well, look, I amassed this whole team. Look what I did. I mean, that's a huge, huge um, deal for people. But I mean, there's plenty of room for everyone. Yeah, I love that. You don't have to be technical. You know, <laughs> like there's a lot of other jobs, community managers, like there's extra, you know, so we have social media managers. So you would manage the social media. There's like so many elements around a blockchain company that you have to manage. Investor relations, you got to go talk to investors. You got to manage the investors. I mean, there's, there's a lot. There's a lot to do. You need a lot of people. You really do need that a lot. That just reiterates that there is a space for everybody, and I think the more Absolutely. we talk about it, I think a lot of people shy away from you know the the heavy tech field because they feel like they have to be technical. Whereas I think that just that reiteration is probably really great for our members to hear and to to know <laughs> again that there you do have to be yeah and 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 the thing about it is you really have to trust trust your tech people like they you know and it's hard because there's a lot of tech people that are, you know we talk our tech and. Some of it's correct, some of it's not. Some of us want to get into wars. Some of us are like, I don't, I don't care what blockchain you use. It doesn't matter to me. They're all, you know, they're all good. It's, uh, it's for whatever you need it for. So, I mean, you just have to be careful if you're not technical and you want to come into this space, like who you're connecting with. But, you know, there's a lot of people that don't have to be technical to come into this space. Absolutely. Well, I love one of your titles is uh, the chief of the block, which is like a perfect chief of the title ever. <laughs> and that's I told that I stole that from Chief of the Bench. <laughs> so I'm gonna give him the credit for that one. <laughs> that's the greatest title ever. Oh, thanks. That's your accelerator, and so I love yes. that. And I would like to know just a little bit more about how you started the accelerator and that due diligence um, intensive, because that sounds like a wonderful document. That's 31 pages of some good stuff. And yeah, it's it's a lot, it's that's that. a big document. So, so I so um, yet again, so 2017 December, mm -hmm. um, I was working with someone else, and we had um, come up with this idea of doing an accelerator because we had we saw that their you know market was going up then, and we saw that there, there could be a lot of companies that would require our kind of C level help. We kind of came in at C suite level and helped uh, evolve companies. And so I went and did a massive, first I wrote up the mission and vision, like this is what we're gonna do, this is what the accelerator is gonna be. It's you know, blockchain specific, but not blockchain centric. Yeah, it's blockchain centric, but we didn't care like which blockchain. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't say cryptocurrency, we left that out. We didn't say ICO, we left that out. Okay. So it was all blockchain. And then we said, okay, here are all the different um, kind of sectors. So we did literally every sector, kind of we stayed out of the cannabis because we figured blockchain, cannabis, kind of like you're walking a serious line there. So it's like, we better stay out of that one. But basically we were open to everyone. And then I went and did a massive competitive analysis on who were doing blockchain accelerators in the world. Because, you know, you're not going to just have, you're not just going to look at in the U.S. like there's other competitors because blockchain is like a global phenomenon. So I found about 20 at the time wow. worldwide. Mm -hmm. There was about one or two here. Now there's about five here, blockchain specific. Okay. And, um, and so I was like, wow, well, that's not a ton. And I said, well, there's room for one more. And there was only like one in America. So I said, okay, come to find out there's like four or five more that I found. You know, when you start one and you, you find out, out the work. <laughs> oh, by the way, there's like four or five more. Um, but uh, most of them were global. And so I said, okay, that's cool. And then that kind of lay dormant for a minute. And then this international business accelerator who's here in LA found out about me and we talked about doing this blockchain accelerator. I'm like, well, look, I already have the curriculum, I already have the mission, I already have, you know, I know what needs to be done to get companies funded. So I said, let's combine forces and do that. So that's how we combine forces. And that's the blockchain accelerator for global growth. 
-hmm. And our applications are open, by the way. Yay. If you want to apply. <laughs> oh, we're going to get to that Applications are still open. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> I had to throw that out. So what is the due diligence intensive and kind of what is our global growth and scale? So mm -hmm. the, in the accelerator, it's 12 weeks. I'll just go over what it is real quick. It's 12 weeks and we do six weeks of kind of programming uh, and we go over everything global. So we go over like cult cultural things. We go uh, about global PR, global taxation, global uh, accounting, global legal. I mean, there are so many elements that you have to look out for because of a the nature of the blockchain space where you might have to go get your money outside of the United States. Mm -hmm. So how do you deal with that in these different jurisdictions? What do you need to be thinking about in these ju different jurisdictions? How do these people, you know, culturally interact? What are some kind of myths that we can bust out? And it's like, how do you behave in these, you know, people have different cultures and different ways that they do business and different things that they expect. And so we teach you all of that. Mm -hmm. We help you you know, kind of do your go-to-market in a different um, country. And then the other thing we do is we do the due diligence intensive. So what is that? There's competition for money. So most people don't understand when you go to an angel investor or a VC or whoever that you are trying to family office, hedge fund, we can go on and on, um, any of these financing um, kind of arms, there's competition. They've heard your idea. And they probably heard it four or five times already that week. And so how are you going to set yourself apart um, in order to make sure that you are, are ready for their funding? It's in the due diligence process. And so most people don't understand what is required for, from a funder in order to get their powder. So outside of a term sheet, so people say, okay, I got a term sheet, great. And then they're waiting and you're like, hey, Jane, did you ever get your money? No, it's like, I got to do this. Da, 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 da. Okay, the reason why it takes three to six months potentially for you to do a due diligence is because you didn't have your company packaged properly in order to present it to investors. So basically, if you think about movies and TV, movies and TVs get sold because they know how to package themselves properly. They have their script, they have their actors attached, they have their distribution, they have their money, they have, you know, they have their director, they have their blah, 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 blah. Like think of it that way, except for a company. So okay. there's a lot of other things that you need to do for a company as a traditional company. Now, what else do you need to do? In the blockchain space, you need a white paper, you need certain social media, you need, you know, your cap table looks a little different. If, you know, there's, there's some other elements in the blockchain space that you have to add in to your, your uh, due diligence in order to make sure that those funders are satisfied as well. So that's what the due diligence intensive is. Well, so that is, that takes care of the whole 12 weeks as well, or is that just, um, that's, that's across the 12 weeks. That's, you know, we do that. Like, that's literally the first thing we teach you actually. Because okay. <laughs> Cause the thing is, is like, we're preparing you to go get this money. Mm -hmm. and, and we know like what you need. So the first day we go over the due diligence intensive. So we had one of our companies actually got around because of that, because of the fact that, you know, they, they said, okay, we got this thing. And then they, they sent them this, the, the criterion. Hey, we need these seven items. I'm like, well, send them your, send them your due diligence. <laughs> you already have it done. It was already finished. That's and so sweet. what they asked for was, uh, but I know because that's, I know that works because I've raised money with that before, just the due diligence awesome. portion. So, so it's like, how do you know that works? Seen? Like, this is interesting. So how many companies have you seen come through your accelerator and what kind of like, what types are they? That you so we had, we had our first cohort. We had seven come through, four made it. Wow. <laughs> and why doesn't always make it? Well, it's <laughs> intense. 12 weeks is a long time. It's, it's, it, and it's it, an it intense is. and we are accelerating you. So like it's different between incubating, accelerating, pre sell you know, like we are making sure that you are getting fundable. So um, two were healthcare companies, mm -hmm. one was music and one was POS for cryptocurrency. Nice. That's what it was. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's those were the four. It's really a, a passion for me. I really think that that's a very interesting uh, merge with you know blockchain so that is that's going to be huge um the music one is huge you know anything around content and identity and kind of sharing and uh, copyright attribution i've seen a lot of those um those are very very popular but yeah the two healthcare ones were very interesting one was around records mm -hmm. and one was around opioid uh scripts yeah. so like if you write too many scripts 
you know, the, how can the doctor check? How, the, how can the pharmacist check? Well, the blockchain is going to kind of track like this doctor wrote you this script and then, you know, you got another one two days later, like that's wrong. <laughs> so crisis is in conjunction with their products. So they have a, that, you know, they have a physical product and they have their, the blockchain piece. So the other one has kind of a, a software and a blockchain piece. So all these were kind of adding the blockchain piece into their currently existing products. So what kind of projects do you look for that you think are viable or is there a vetting process to come into the accelerator? Yeah, you got to fill out your application yeah. and then I, I'm going to talk to you. So <laughs> I, I literally talk to all the companies and if you don't talk to me, that says a lot because yes. I am the screen. I am the screener. I am the, the gatekeeper. <laughs> I'm the entire screener. So like, I literally go through every application, all the white papers, all like I read everything. And then I want to talk to you about you. Like, why are you applying here? What, you know, what are you going to get out of it? Yeah. So I ask some questions about, you know, around that. And so I, I you know, uh, that's kind of the whole process. Then you okay. kind of go into our acceptance and then, we accept you and you, and we do charge a fee for this. So mm -hmm. it is a fee, but that's okay. You know, anything worth anything. It, you got to pay to play. You got to pay. But this, this is worth the money because the, the due diligence intensive by itself is, I mean, I charge a lot of money for that personally. Mm -hmm. It's worth more than that because if you get your money, what, you know, what was that worth? Exactly. You can get your 100K, 200K, 500K, million dollars, and you can use this over and over again. It's not like once you get the due diligence intensive, you're never going to know it. Like, you're always going to be asked these things. The same question. At all the different levels. Yes, mm -hmm. all the different levels. Um, yeah, I won't say where I got part of the due diligence intensive, but I mean, I know it works. I, I've, I've raised money for some very big projects with that. That's all seed awesome. round. Yeah, so I know it works. There's no, no question about it. Because this is what all the people ask for. This is what they all ask for. So it's like they all ask for that. So they said you probably encountered many obstacles just in you know going through the technical field. So can you wow. speak to some of those? Yeah, some of those obstacles that you run into, and what you would advise people that are coming into the space and and doing the things that they need to do now. How to avoid those pitfalls? You know, I get asked this all the time, and I've been very fortunate. The thing, the thing that I've been fortunate about, and I guess one of the things to, to look at is I've had some very, very good management, supportive management okay. uh, coming up through the tech field. And I've had very, very good mentors that are males mm -hmm. um, because there just aren't that many female CTOs. There just yeah. aren't that many. <laughs> so, you know, you have to say, okay, who are the great mentors there? And then from a business side, I have a lot of friends that are on the VC side and, and in the business side and very successful mm -hmm. business people. So they are also my mentors. So you have to find some good mentors and you have to be very, you know, from, it's also funny. I've been asked this several times, like, do you have this? I don't I never, well, I knew about this, but like this imposter syndrome or, and I'm thinking, <laughs> I have, have no doubt about my capability whatsoever. Zero. That's awesome. I have zero doubt about my capability. So it's like, hmm, that's foreign to me. But I know some people do. And the thing is, you can't doubt yourself. You just cannot. You just have to do it and just go for it. And so this is how I've gotten on the trajectory of my career. Mm -hmm. Like I would have never done any, you know, I wouldn't be in the money game if I had just, you know, somebody's like, hey, you want to do it? I'm like, why not? So, I mean, I just went for it. <laughs> Why not? You know, just do it. Nike, you know, go for it. Yes. So that's kind of the thing. You cut, sometimes you just got to go for it. If it works, great. If it doesn't, that's okay. You learn something and you learned a lot about yourself too. Like yeah. the other thing is kind of like, what are you saying yes to you for? Like mm -hmm. and about. And so, you know, that's a, a help just in general, I think. I think that applies to more than just the tech industry. It does. It, I think that's a, that's a universal law <laughs> that'll work in every, every given situation. But I've been very, I've been very fortunate. I've been very fortunate to have a lot of good, good mentors. That's, that's very important. That's really interesting because they always mm -hmm. say that's the hardest thing is to find mentors. So what would your recommendation be to how to go about, you know, oh. finding a mentor for yourself? 
well, you know, I I mentor people all the time, so I'm available for mentorship. That's number one. But number two, (laughs) number two, I think, I think, you know, finding people in your field that you admire, finding people outside of your field you admire, um, you know, try and get to met. Like I've met so many people, like I could name drop tons of like tons of people. I won't do it, but I mean, (laughs) but I've done it because like I went network with these people and, you know, you, you create friendships, you create relationships, and then, you know, you can say, Hey, I'm, you know, I just want to learn. I want to learn from you. And, you know, that's a powerful thing and being open to the learning from someone else Mm -hmm. and being able to receive that. That's sometimes that's hard, you know, and people think, Oh, I'm by myself. Well, you're by yourself because you haven't decided to go out there and open yourself up. So I'll give you a story about that. When I was at the company where I won the award, I was by myself. I was the only American in the European company. And there was, you know, I had Europe and then I had India. So there was no people here. So I said, dang, this is tough. Well, how do I go about expanding my skill set? So the way I did it was, is I joined a group and we read these tech books every week. So I went and, you know, did this meetup and did that. And I said, oh, this is great. So like, you know, the guys got to know me and we all kind of shared information and we, we kind of evolved each other from a technical way. And it wasn't a big group. It was like 10 or 15 people. That's not massive, but it was good enough. Mm -hmm. We had our, you know, little thing we did on Tuesdays. So that was great. So, I mean, find a group like that, make a group like that, (laughs) you know, do something, you know, don't just sit there and go, I'm by myself. If you feel you need some kind of elevation, motivation, uh, some kind of moving forward, then make something. Mm -hmm. And that's, well, that's the one thing. Did. And that, yeah, <laughs> I and there you go. That's, that's what you've done. Exactly but I mean, that's did. the thing. Like, you just make it and then see what happens. Like, if it works, great. If it doesn't work, that's okay, too. You learn something about yourself. Yes. And that so is. that's huge. And, and don't be afraid to fail. I mean, you know, I had to, some people are like, Barb, you should have been doing a fund years ago. I'm like, I understand that, but it just didn't work out at that time. You know, but I could take all the skill sets that I have and I've learned and apply it to the fun. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. But it's like, you know, just do it. Just try it. We're in a day and age, like, think about agile development. Try, fail, try, fail, try, fail. Try feedback, fail. Like, keep going on and on and on. It's just (laughs) like, like, that's just how software is made now. Like, what's the difference? Yeah, I love that. That that definitely reiterates uh, the thing that I try to do each and every day in different areas. So like I said, mm-hmm. it's really a Black Blockchain Consultants was the group that we came up with because it was, we didn't want to be alone. And they, we knew there were so many of us that wanted that information. So the exchange here has been phenomenal. And that's how we try to keep that going. And as for that's just wonderful. doing it, I think we're, we're moving in that direction very much so. so my it's, important. it's important for us to have the conversations. Yes, I think it is. Absolutely. That's we, we thoroughly appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate yeah. you guys calling. <laughs> <laughs> because it's always a wonderful thing to have someone, specifically a veteran in the field, and just speak to you um, and make sure you're on the right track and just to get your insights. So we definitely thank you so very much. So Thank we you. always like to help you know, our members also get jobs. So we're going to hit you up for that last. Like, what projects are you doing that you may need some help with? How can we help you? Oh, God, I got a lot of projects. Uh, so I have one, two, I have about two and two or three in stealth. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of very large projects that are going to need some serious help, okay. <laughs> but they're all in stealth mode. And uh, when you, when you work with, I'll just say it this way. I mean, they're very, very large. They're very, very large. And I get, I get approached with very, very large projects, which is good because I'm, I'm big like that. But it's like, oh, it takes a while to get them moving. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they're all moving and then they're all moving at the same time on top of that. So then I'm like, how do you balance this? <laughs> well, you, you cut, I do know how to balance it. You kind of like, uh, it's like, okay, now I have to, you know, sometimes you got to let some stuff go. Mm-hmm. to have the new new stuff so uh i have a few bigger projects and stuff and i guess when they're ready to go i can um, you know let you guys know and we are here you know, we'll definitely we'll definitely need some help because there's no doubt it's a lot of there's and there's a lot to be done and then 
what, I don't know, like kind of what the different skill sets are there, but you know, like I said before, we need all the different skill sets. Yes. So if they're developers, yeah. they're UI, yeah, if they're UI, <laughs> UX people, if they're marketers, if they're, you know, like you need everybody mm-hmm. and you need everything on a blockchain project. And we have that. So we would be more That's than awesome. happy to, to assist in any of those projects that you have upcoming. So keep us in mind for that. I will absolutely do that. Awesome. So I'm going to say one thing to you, and this is my my final question with regard to your your approach to life. I think we kind of went through that with the agile aspect, but what's Mm -hmm. one thing that you believe has made you successful um, in your career and in your life at this point in time? One thing successful in my career and life. Wow. That was a, that was a question. I know. Um, (laughs) Let's let me think. Okay. I, I think I've always had a morning routine Mm -hmm. and I'm also very organized in my mind and also in general. I'm highly, highly organized and efficient because if I tell really how many things I work on, people would be like, when do you even sleep? But I'm highly efficient in my time. And the other thing that recently I've been learning is you got to kind of let some stuff go like you got there there's some stuff that naturally clears out Mm -hmm. and you gotta just let it clear out and don't go back there (laughs) you know there's no that there's no going back like there's no backwards like so things naturally you know so for me in my life things have always kind of naturally come and go and for a long time i didn't understand that now i'm like okay i get it things naturally come and go Mm -hmm. so i uh, but that's to propel you forward and some things propel you forward and you have to try and recognize that so between my morning routine and then being efficient in your time and then you know allowing things to just kind of roll off now it's like been like oh so much so much more then so much more awesome <laughs> that's the, that's no drama the less drama you know like because i mean we're, as a woman you know a lot of people come to you as a woman and they want i don't know they have this expectation you're a woman Yes, I am. Yes. But that doesn't make me not a serious business person. That doesn't make me any more efficient or less efficient than you. That doesn't mean I don't can't do what you know you can do. It's like, you know, they have this expectation of you as a woman. And it's like, we just need to come in with expectation of this is what I can give. This is what I can receive. And this is the bound of that. And that's it. Like, Outside of that, it's like, what are we doing? Then, you know, are we here to do business or what? Are we here to do this or what? Are we, you know, like, let's, and then let's be clear. Let's be clear about what we're doing. I think a lot of things happen because we're, we're not clear in ourselves. Mm-hmm. And then we're, we're projecting that out. And it's like, well, just be clear. You want information? What information do you want? Somebody asked me yesterday, I want this information. Okay, send them that. Well, I need to talk to you. Okay, set up an appointment. Didn't make the appointment. You're not serious. Later. (laughs) But before that would bother me. That would bother me to no end. Just wasting my time. Like I would be, and now I'm just like, oh, I said, well, waited my five. Let it go. I waited my five minutes, and I said, oh, now I can go do my other stuff. You know, like I had other stuff to do, so I said, I'm gonna do my other stuff. Period, and then you're off to the next. Well, like yeah, I had to. Yeah. So next on that guy, period. You know, because you can't allow, you know, the thing is, is sometimes we take things on that are not ours and yeah. we shouldn't do that. And that's another lesson I've had. So, so many lessons right I there. I see. You're that just a wealth lesson. of lessons. We're just going to have the <laughs> lesson that's according to Barbara. <laughs> yeah, I could write a few more, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, I know you could, but we will have to have you back on. I want to well, open it up to our, our lovely audience here to see if there's any. Ooh, ask the audience. Yeah. Here's a question. Hello, participants. <laughs> Do any of you have? Well, any- ten participants. Yes. Don't don't be shy. <laughs> you have a question. You see, Miss Harper is wonderful and nice. So. <laughs> They're probably all just probably driving because <laughs> it's five. Hey, well, that's awesome. Oh, yes, somebody sir. popped up. Have a question. There's a couple. She, uh, Miss K- Dr. Keisha asks, "What is your power morning routine?" What is my power morning routine? Like okay. That. So I do several things in the morning. Mm -hmm. I pray. I do meditation. I do, um, 
I open my chakras up so I'm very zen. Um, then what else do I do? And then I walk and then I have my smoothie. I started making my bed because I'm moving out of my house, which that's like a whole nother conversation. But, and so like, I, uh, cause I, I just, when I was a kid, I just didn't like making my bed. So I stopped doing it, but now I've kind of made it up. I said, hmm, this main bed thing is kind of cool. So that's just because of, uh, uh, cause it had to be clean all the time. I don't know. I might go back to not making it, but that's kind of my routine in the morning. It takes a while, a couple hours, maybe an hour and a half, two hours for me to get through that. Then I'm ready showering and I'll get going. And you're in California, correct? I'm in Los Angeles and it's a little chilly here for me this week. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, well, I'm not used to this weather. I'm like, oh, it's 40, yeah. it's too cold. You don't even want to know what we're going through over here. <laughs> I can only imagine. I, I've asked people, like, I uh, did hear about the polar vortex. Did you guys hear, you know, were you guys in the polar vortex? Oh, no? Okay. Yeah, it's just, I mean, literally today, snow, and then tomorrow it's supposed to be 57. Like, just the ridiculousness on this side of the country. So. Oh, wow. Awesome. I think Ms. Shree has a question. She says, is there a certain checklist we need before we approach you for help? Uh, no. No, the only thing that I require, the only thing that I require if you want to approach me for help is that you, when I say, please make a count, an appointment on my calendar, <laughs> click the link. Like you must click the link because what happens is because like literally I get so many communications from so many things now, it's insane. Mm. Like there's Telegram, there's WhatsApp, there's oh, LinkedIn, yes. there's Instagram, there's like, you know, email, I get text messages, I get phone calls. I cannot deal with all of that. Mm -hmm. And so I've, you know, I've automated my calendar. And so like, I'm like, hey, just like you did, hey, set, click the link. And it's like, well, we need extra time. Don't worry. Just put the time on there and I'll make it extra. <laughs> <laughs> But put the time on there because otherwise, because I have multiple calendars that I'm handling. Ah, like, so when okay. you're clicking that link, really, it's going to like six other calendars and going through <laughs> and going, this time is available. This time is available. This time, like, so I'm literally handling that through, you know, one or two automated things that I do. And so it's like, if you don't click that calendar link, don't start trying to email me and like, hey, set up a time. Get, I can't do that. Gotcha. I just can't do that. That's like almost information overload for me. And as you could see, like I had a hard time dialing into the thing. There's just some basic things that I need to have done because mm -hmm. see, the other thing is, is like your mind needs to be free about that. It's like, okay, if they click the link, they're really interested in talking. If they don't, they're not. It's okay. Yes. I don't have to talk to you. It's fine. <laughs> Well, I, my feelings are not going to be hurt because you didn't click the link, but I gave you the opportunity to make the appointment. That's yes. it. I mean, so it's really just not that hard. <laughs> it isn't. Is it, but, it's know. really not that hard. Just click it and just we're good. It. Yeah, we're, we're going to just, you know, that Nike thing, just do it. Follow through. Just do it. Do. It's okay. And fill out the little answers. If you, you know, just, if you don't, you know, just tell me kind of what you want. That's it. I mean, that's it. And that's then we'll have a conversation. And then, uh, you know, I talk to plenty of people every day. Let me see if there's any more questions here. I don't think there are. Well, thank you again, Mrs. Barbara. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. I hope to talk right, to here's you. Here's a question. Well, actually, we just do have a question. See how yes. everybody just pops in there? Uh, Ms. Aaron says, is there a way for BBC could package ourselves for our members so as to keep us in the forefront of your memory for you to do <laughs> Don't worry, Ms. Erin, I'm going to bother her all the time. She is like my bestie now. She doesn't Don't, know. Oh, so, so you know what, Erin, here, here's an answer. Erin, here's an answer. Uh, why don't you connect up, you know, I, you guys are more than, I'm more than happy to connect up with everybody on LinkedIn mm -hmm. because that is a way to get in touch with me because I do pay attention to LinkedIn. I don't not pay attention to it. It's, pro you know, I check it kind of a couple times a day versus email versus, so like really there's some ways to get to me, but if you connect up with me on LinkedIn, then, you know, and you just say, hey, you know, heard you on the BBC, I'll be like, great. And, you know, that's it. I'm, I'm available that way also. So like you guys will be in the forefront and then you can also see like what's going on with my projects, what am I doing? Like you look at my profile and go, oh, this one popped up. So yeah, we'll be Lincoln stalking you, so we got that covered. Don't Good, worry. excellent. <laughs> I don't okay. mind Lincoln stalk. <laughs> yeah, well, we will just 
will pleasantly stalk you. How's that? It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. And thank you everybody for, you know, coming. And I know it's at that crazy thank time. You. So have a great evening. You have a wonderful afternoon. And we thank you. Soon. Thanks again. You have a wonderful rest of your evening. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Bye-bye. Okay.